Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. Bam Weather, meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update, guys. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. We have a lot to talk about today with some critical changes in the weekend weather models that we need to talk about as we go throughout the video today. But I do want to start out with observed rainfall totals to highlight a lot of areas picking up some heavy rain over the past seven days, specifically across eastern parts of Nebraska. More than five to six inches of rain in spots there in northeast Nebraska. Much of Iowa has cashed in on heavy rains and that has spread over into northern Illinois as well with some really critical rains because they were getting dry up here. We still have some dryness in central Illinois and northern Indiana and to kind of highlight the the nature of this pattern some of the have and the have nots that we've seen. I want to draw your attention to this county in Illinois here Ottawa near Ottawa Illinois. Northwestern parts of the county more than five inches of rain. Southeastern parts of the county nearly a quarter of an inch or of rain or less less, uh, just a huge divide in some of these locations in terms of somebody getting in a lot of rain and somebody just down the road getting missed out and probably uh, really feeling the effects of that with the hotter and drier pattern that has been in place. Areas that have been a little bit more widespread with missing out. Uh, again, parts of central Illinois, northern Indiana, northwestern Ohio through here. There have been some spots further down to the south as well in parts of far southern Indiana and Kentucky that you can see. And Kansas as well. Western Kansas, parts of southern Kansas have cashed in on rain. But near Topeka here, northeastern parts of Kansas have dried out. And then in general, you can see how messy that it's been across northwestern parts of the plain. So a lot of areas are doing good. A lot of areas have had plenty of rain, but certainly there are some spots that could use the rain. If we look at our soil moisture percentile chart here, you can kind of see the corridor from uh, the central plains and especially into parts of the northern Ohio Valley through here. And then another corridor through here. Now, again, parts of Nebraska especially have been able to cash in on some rain, but still running slightly behind uh, even with some of the improvements in terms of the soil moisture percentiles, but where a lot of the corn is, northern Iowa, uh, southern Minnesota here, uh, northern parts of Illinois, key rains have really helped some things out. In terms of how we will progress over the next seven days, there should be plenty of additional rain opportunities in the forecast. If we take a look, we have cooler air and a cold front coming in across the northern portion of the country, some warmer air staying south and east. In between that, there should be rain opportunities before the warmth really should pick back up as we work into the week two time frame. And this has been really the big change over the weekend. Data trending much hotter over the past couple of days, trying to bring in more widespread above normal temperatures as we work into this week two time frame, along with northwest flow and storm cluster opportunities. We'll touch a little bit more on that here in a moment in terms of the severe weather threats. But, you know, I think that this is the big thing that I want to talk about today. And it's the trend in temperatures. Model data right now, guys, just really been all over the place. There have been uh, a lot of shifts in terms of, okay, there's a cold front in here. How long is it going to get cool? Will the heat come back? Will there be notable heat? Uh, it's been a very challenging time frame. There's no doubt about that. And I'm going to try to break down why that is to the best of my ability in this video and what to expect as we close out the month of July. But let's talk about this first. This is the next 10 days on the latest run of the GFS model. You can see the northwest flow. You can see the storm cluster activity through here. Uh, the further north and west that you are, the messier that it will likely be. But uh, for much of the primary grown regions across Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, there should be plenty of rain and storm opportunities ahead over the next 10 days. If we take a look at the European model, it's very similar. You know, it's a little bit uh, more, more widespread, I would say, to the north in parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin. I don't disagree with that because I think that as we work into the 6 to 10 day time frame, some of the rains can come further to the north. But the bottom line here, guys, it's active. There should be plenty of rain opportunities in here across this region. The further south and west you go, parts of Kansas that have gotten a little bit drier, parts of Missouri, probably not as heavy with the moisture and getting hotter with time as well. So that is something to keep in mind. Based off of the upper level setup that I see and some of the instability uh, signals that I see as we work late this week and into next week, you know, I think that if you're, you're in this red area, 
probably have multiple opportunities for some heavy rain and severe storm clusters. I certainly think that we can get what we call some ridge riders, the ridge building down here in the south central part of the country. And this corridor, especially for severe weather potential as we work late this week and into the weekend. I do think the further north and west that you go, there are rain opportunities in here, but maybe a little bit messier in nature further to the north and to the northwest. Regardless, it's an active pattern. Uh, and certainly if you're looking for dry time or you have outdoor events as we work into the weekend and into next week, you're going to want to be utilizing the Clarity platform, the Clarity chat feature if you have access to it, because uh, this is a this is a type of a pattern that model data really struggles with. Timing out storm clusters, seeing the extent of them, where they're going to track. Uh, sometimes the European model, for example, tends to dive them too far south. Uh, sometimes model data will not uh, push them through the correct area. They'll be too far north away from the instability. And so there's a lot of variables that go into northwest flow uh, patterns. And so, again, I, I would highly, highly recommend watching videos, looking at insights, using that chat feature as we get through this time frame. In terms of data that supports the severe weather threat, we can take a look here at the CFS forecast in the week two time frame. So late week one into the week two time frame does continue to support an active pattern with perhaps multiple opportunities for severe weather. So going to be busy ahead in the storm department for the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. In terms of our overall pattern and what's driving it ahead, we talked about this at length. You know, the, the the data has gone back and forth a little bit with the MJO, but I would say since last week, it's been pretty consistent. In the short term, moving through MJO phase five, and then as we get into the week two time frame, we should be feeling the influences of MJO phase six. Here's a look at MJO phase five. We still have our negative AAM in place for the time being. You zoom that out so it's a little bit easier to see for you all. Favors warmth in the east, some cooler air in the western plains, warmth in the Pacific Northwest, we take a look at the EPS forecast the next five days. All things considered, it matches up pretty darn close. You know, I would say that uh, for an analog, it matches up pretty good as a whole for the next five days. So this was the EPS forecast last week. This was its 11 to 15 day forecast. You say, okay, well, MJO phase six, that's a cooler phase here, guys. We can see that correlating. And so we should have a cooler shot of air. We do have a cold front late this week. But look at how that same period has trended. Here was the old run. Here's the new run. So for whatever reason, model data, which was trying to see the MJO phase six influence of some cooler air, has backed off on that big time. In fact, now it's hotter than normal, especially for the central plains in the Ohio Valley. So what has happened? What has changed? We're, f we're going to be in MJO phase six. You can see that right here. But model data not picking up on the signal. I attribute a lot of that in addition to messy upper level lows that I think have been really wreaking havoc with the model data. I attribute a lot of this trend to what's going on in the Western Pacific. We can see some recurves, which has favored some of the cold front signals that were in there. They're very weak. What has now started to show up is a stronger signal for a tropical system, probably a typhoon moving westward towards China and Taiwan later this week. Why is that important? Well, when you move these tropical systems west, it tends to pump up ridge a ridge of high pressure over Asia, which then correlates to the United States. It affects the whole jet stream. It affects the whole pattern working towards the United States. Ultimately, nine times out of 10, this is a heat signal compared to a recurve, which is a cooler signal. And so this is what I think is happening in the extended range. I also think that there's the potential that, you know, did we give up on our, our negative AAM driven heat a little bit too fast? If you look at the last 14 days, it's been hotter than normal for much of the country outside of Texas, especially in the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. If you look at the correlation for the weaker than normal global winds, looks a lot like what we've been experiencing as of late. And so perhaps we gave up on the hotter idea, at least in the Eastern Belt, a little bit too fast from this. Because, you know, if we look at our global wind observations, we started getting hot about two or three weeks after we started to drop the global winds, and we reached our lowest state end of June, start of July. That would favor right into the upcoming week two timeframe for a heat wave. 
And, and again, that was the original idea, and that's what the data is trying to see. You look at the EPS here, it's trying to see the hotter forecast, especially across the central plains in the Ohio Valley. And so, you know, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind, guys. I'll admit it. It's been a frustrating pattern, a lot of variables, a lot of moving pieces, but I, I don't really see enough support for the cool MJO idea, and certainly almost all the data is hot in week two to not indicate that it's going to get hotter again late in July. I will mention, I will mention that if there's a risk, one of two things, MJO turning a little bit stronger, cooler risk in here. If that western typhoon does not move towards China, does not materialize, that's a cooler risk as well. But right now leaning more towards the warm solution. From a precipitation perspective, here's month to date precipitation compared to normal. You can see the heavy corridor of rain across, uh, again, critical areas, Iowa, northern Illinois, eastern Nebraska, where it's been a little bit drier, guys. Parts of Kansas, parts of the Ohio Valley, parts of the Northwest Plains. You know, if we look at the next 14 days or so, guys, this blue area is kind of your primary storm track. That should help with some rains across northern Illinois, central Illinois, northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, parts of South Dakota. Where I think there's a little bit more uncertainty are these black circled areas. My concern with the lower Ohio Valley into the Tennessee Valley is that at times you are south of the primary storm track. I think your best opportunity will be later this week and into the weekend. If you don't cash in then, more concerns start to rise. Definitely concerned about eastern Kansas here because I think that with time you're under the ridge of heat and the better rains are to your north. So maybe increasingly hotter and drier in this area. In terms of the far northwest plains, Canadian prairies, I do think you have rain opportunities. I would not be shocked if it's messier in nature. Probably some localized spots staying drier than normal. Uh, before we go, real quick guys, I just want to make this note, something we're keeping an eye on in the Atlantic may also be influencing the warmer trend. Typically, when you get tropical activity in the Gulf, it tends to favor warmer trends to the north, so we may be feeling a little bit of that as well in the short term. There's a 30% risk for tropical development here along the Gulf Coast. We already have a, a disturbance that has developed off the southeast coast. The waters are much warmer than normal along the Gulf Coast. Definitely think we need to keep an eye on this later this week. Uh, where exactly it tracks, if it can stay a little bit further south, if it can do this number, we need to watch out for Texas, Louisiana later this week. If it can stay a little bit further to the north, it's probably not going to materialize. Uh, we'll have some more details on the Clarity platform on this in the coming days, but something to be on the lookout for for the Gulf Coast. Uh, guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have questions, as normal, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great rest of your day.